Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Today we have a review of this guy. This is the Kubi KU200. This is a pretty interesting knife from Kubi. Uh, it has a titanium and carbon fiber handle, frame lock, and an S35VN blade. So, let's jump right in with some size comparisons. Let's start off with our basics. This is the Ontario Wrap Model 2. Here's the Model 1. So, yeah, this knife is uh, kind of in a mid-range between those. Uh, next up, let's do, uh, here it is against our Civivi Praxis and our Civivi Elementum. So again, kind of a kind of an in-between range there. Here he is against the Benchmade Bug Out and the Spyderco PM2. So actually he's pretty much bug out size. Just about bug out size. A little bit heavier, but you know, there's not much. It's lighter than a bug out. Uh, here he is against <laughs> the Gerber Paraframe and the Gerber Mini Paraframe. Who does not want to sit up? I'm adding these guys to my size comparison group because, come on, I think. Everyone has at least seen a Gerber Paraframe at Walmart. Even if you're not a knife person, you've probably seen a Gerber Paraframe multiple times, probably owned one, probably have a good idea for it. So I think I think these are great size comparison knives. I think pretty much everyone is at least somewhat familiar. Um, and let's compare it against my favorite knife of all time, the Cold Steel 8015. And uh, one more. Let's do another frame lock. Here he is against the Kershaw bare knuckle. I should brought out some more titanium frame locks, but I don't have any with me right now on the table. So there we go. All right. Kubi. Kubi is an interesting brand. Uh, I have several Kubi knives. Again, should have brought some more out for comparisons. Uh, this is the most expensive Kubi I have right now. And uh, expensive is in big quotation marks because this knife here, I paid about 85 bucks for it. Yeah, 85 bucks for a titanium frame lock flipper, an S35VN. You know, that's kind of, that's approaching Tucson levels of, um, you know, mind boggling value. Um, and is it actual S35VN? Well, I've had this knife for quite a while. I've been using him, and I mean, it does. It does feel like a high-end steel. It, it does, you know. Very, it's pretty stainless, and uh, the edge retention seems to be pretty good. So, yeah. I, I'm pretty I'm pretty impressed with this knife, actually. Very impressed. Um, but let's go ahead and let's start getting into the review section of the video. And let's go start off with some cardboard cutting. Alright, let's go ahead and destroy a box with the Kubi KU 200. So as you can see, this blade is a clip point. I love clip points. They're one of my favorite blade shapes. Uh, the knife the itself is fairly comfortable. The ergonomic lines are good. There are some sharp edges here and there, which um, aren't ideal, but you know it's it, it's not too bad. The clip does cause some problems. Uh, it's a unique looking clip to say the least, but honestly, it doesn't cause as many problems as you might expect. Um, so ergonomically, this knife is 
what I would consider to be fine. It is pretty slicey, as you just saw. It can definitely work for you. So as for thinness behind the edge, this knife I would say is well ground. Uh, it's a flat grind, I believe, yeah it looks pretty flat. Uh, it's a flat grind, uh, decently thin behind the edge, uh, no complaints there. Uh, blade stock thickness is pretty average um, for a knife like this. So it performs just about like you would expect it to perform. Um, and, I mean, that's, that's not saying anything bad. It's just, you know, kind of your basic EDC type knife. And it does your kind of basic EDC type knife tasks very well. Uh, the finish does hold up very good. Like I said, I've had this guy for a while. And you just saw me slice all this cardboard with tape and stuff. And it doesn't really get too marked up. So, that's nice. Alright, let's go take a closer look. All right, Kubi KU200. How's it carry? I mean, it's not deep, it's not shallow. This is actually the carry that I prefer. I'm not a big fan of, um, you know, super shallow carry, but I'm also not a super big fan of real deep carry on a lot of knives. Uh, it's fine on some knives, but I do like where, you know, you can grab a little bit more when you're getting it out of your pocket. Uh, the one thing on this knife that's going to be a little bit of a concern to some people is the clip. That is a very, very unique clip, and it, it, I mean, it's not exactly a subtle clip. It's fat, it has those big diamonds in it. As far as the clips go, this is actually great. It works great. You know, for a titanium milled clip, I mean, it's got plenty of, it's got good enough, you know, kind of spring to it. It's plenty wide under there. Uh, single screw, you know, it's inset into the See if you can see that. Focus. I will show up later. But I mean, the clip itself, you know, functionally, it works good. You know, in your pocket, you can definitely get your hand down in there. This isn't a huge knife. Get it out. But, you know, the clip does have a look to it. And so it's going to be a clip that, you know, people, people are going to notice. Other things about this knife, uh, I think the carbon fiber insert is really, really good. I think this knife looks good. Um, the action is fine. It's a good action. Uh, when I first got it, it was a little bit stiff. I just, you know, took them apart, oiled them up a little bit. Uh, I, if you look on Amazon reviews, there are people who say that this guy has way too uh, tight of a flip. Um, the lock bar is hard sharp this is sharp to unlock this guy I mean it <laughs> I'm not sure if you can tell the mark through the callus is already on my thumb but yeah it's a little bit sharpish uh, it does have a lock bar insert and over travel stop you can see the over travel stop just kind of peeking out there and there isn't a lock bar insert so you know about what you'd expect in today's knife roll in fact actually let's see if we can get a closer look at the Lock bar insert. Maybe. I don't know. But, I think it's a good looking knife. Uh, one thing that's a little bit weird is the blade is a little bit shorter than you might expect. The blade to handle ratio is a little bit, a little bit off, which is weird because when you look, but perfectly centered by the way, you know, the blade is, you know, almost the end there. But then you flick it out and it's just... 
I don't know if the blade seems small or the handle seems big. I don't think the blade seems small. The handle seems just about right. Um, but I'll grab this. But yeah, so the the finish on it is kind of a. Uh, I mean, it's kind of a sand finish, but a little bit darker. Um, not quite a stone wash though. I'm I'm not sure what we're gonna what we're gonna call it. It does work good. I think this isn't a good size for a lot of people. You know, not too big, not too small. I don't know if I ever said the measurements earlier. I'll give them when we get back to the table. But you know, really, the biggest thing about this knife is the price. Eighty-five bucks. That's how much I paid for it. Now I did look, uh, oh, a couple of weeks ago, I was uh, recommending one to a friend. There's a version of this that has black titanium, and that goes for like ninety six, one hundred and twelve bucks, which still is a good deal. And this guy here is currently unavailable on Amazon, and I haven't been able to find him any other places. But uh, the last time I looked, the price had actually gone up to about ninety bucks. But um, I mean, if you can if you can find one, even ninety bucks is a good deal for this. So let's get back to the table. Let's talk about what I do like, what I don't like, and uh, all that good stuff. All right, Kubi Ku two hundred. What do I like about it? Um, the price. <laughs> I mean, I think that's that's the best part to like about this. You know, you're seeing S35VN available at lower and lower prices all the time. Uh, you know, you remember the Cold, the cold Steel Code 4, uh, you know, S35VN for about 70 bucks. You know, the American Lawman was, you know, about 80 bucks. The American Lawman actually has gotten expensive. And, I mean, Cold Steel in general is in kind of a weird spot right now. But, um, you know, now you're seeing stuff like the Civivi Pintail that, that came out 85 bucks. Uh, Civivi Appalachian Drifter, about 80, 80, 85 bucks. And those are all in S35VN. Uh, you're seeing S35VN from companies like Asher uh, at, you know, between that $75, $85 price point. However, what makes this guy unique is it has the S35VN, but it also has titanium and carbon fiber. Let's see if you can see the S35VN. Yeah, there it is. A little bit dusty there. Um, so I think that's really, really great. Another thing, too, though, is the action is just fine. Uh, this knife, actually, I think is pretty easy to keep your fingers off the lock bar for some reason. I, this knife just its kind of, for me at least. Uh, the carbon fiber... Looks very nice. I think this knife in general looks very nice. I love the clip point. Uh, the milling on the titanium is very nice. You've got these lines and they continue on to the back. A uh, pivot. This is pretty much Kubi standard pivot, but I kind of like the way it looks. It has the steel lock bar insert and over travel stop. This back spacer is pretty nice. And, you know, it has the lanyard hole, you know, kind of proud, but I think this is a cool way to do a lanyard hole. You know, if you're going to have one um, as part of the back spacer, it's pretty pretty interesting. Uh, the ergonomic lines of this guy are very good. We'll talk a little bit about ergonomics here in a sec. I think the blade is good. It performs well. I mean, it sharpens up like S35VN. It kind of behaves like S35VN. I have no reason to doubt that it is S35VN. Um, it carries well. You know, it's not a a lightweight knife, but it's also not heavy. Um, I was going to get some measurements uh, here. Uh, the total length is 7.7 .7 inches, which, hey, that's kind of cool. No, I'm just kidding. The blade length is 3.3 .3 inches, and the handle length is 4.4 inches. So there's a discrepancy between the blade and the handle. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the weight is 4.4 .4 ounces, which, you know, for some people might be a little bit heavy. I don't think that's heavy at all. I, I, I think that's a pretty good range. Um, I mean, if you're trying to compare it to the bug out, well, no. I mean, nothing's as light as a bug out's 1.8 ounces, but, you know, 
I think it's a very, I, I think it's a very well-rounded EDC knife. And, you know, I think that's what it's meant to be. It's, it's an EDC knife, and I think it's pretty well-rounded. I think it's a good, a good knife. So what do I not like? Well, there, there's a couple things. For one, the flipper tab, I don't know, it's just a little bit weird. It's, it's comfortable, but, you know, it's positioned, you see how it's positioned below the um, pivot. The action is still good, but, and, and it does form a good guard, but it does stick down, you know, a fair way. So if you're trying to use this down onto a cutting board or something, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, uh, again, the blade to handle ratio is a little bit off, but when you're using it, you don't really mind so much because, I mean, you've got enough to hold on to and, you know, the jumping up here and the top of the blade is actually, the top of the blade is rounded over pretty nicely, which is nice, but it's weird because the handle is not really nicely rounded over. There, there's sharp edges kind of all over the place. Um, you know, unlocking it is a little bit painful even. So the ergonomic lines, the shape of the handle is very nice, but there are some sharp edges that are just not as nice. And especially since they took the time to round off the blade, I mean, they could have chamfered some parts of the handle. Uh, another thing, I talked about the clip. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a weird clip. I, it, it's it's kind of dorky, honestly. Um, it is inset into the, the scale, but it's kind of a dorky clip. I don't know, I'm just not the biggest fan of that clip. The action, I think it's perfectly serviceable. It's not you know, as good as some actions, but it's perfectly fine. Out of the box, it needed a little bit of tuning. Some people think the action's terrible. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a pretty good action, but like I said, I did tune it up a little bit, so there's that. Um, as for build quality, it's it's well built. Like I said, it could have been chamfered a little bit better, but you know, the flipper tab, like I already said, pretty big flipper tab, but. There's another version of this knife I forgot to mention. This is the, the, the titanium framework version. There's actually this same knife, same shape, but it's in G10. And it's a liner lock, and you can get that guy for like 25 to 30 bucks. Pretty inexpensive, and those are still widely available. I can't really. I'm having a hard time getting hold of this guy, but those other ones are pretty widely available. So final conclusions. Um, you know, I think this knife. If this knife was priced at 150 bucks, you know, there'd be a lot of things that I'd be complaining about way, way more. Like, especially the unchamfered handle. The sharp edges on the on the handle are a little bit annoying. And if this knife costs 150 bucks, I wouldn't be okay with that at all. But the thing is, is it costs 80, 85 bucks. And for that, you're getting a good steel, titanium, carbon fiber. And also, I think the knife looks good. You know, the the... Flipper tab could be shorter, the blade could maybe be a little bit longer, but I think it's a good looking knife. And, I mean, it, it's a good EDC knife. It's kind of a, a basic EDC knife. You put it in your pocket, pull it out, cut some stuff, put it back in, it does its job. And really that's all you can ask of, you know, from a knife. And so I appreciate that. And I think this knife is recommendable. In fact, I have recommended this knife to people in the past. And I will continue to do so. It's a good knife, and if you want one, once they become available again somewhere, pick them up. Um, and yeah, I mean that. I mean that's really that's really all I can say. Is you know, if you want one, pick it up. I, one thing I forgot to mention is actually the the handle is slightly contoured. If you look at that, it's very very slightly contoured, which again would be better ergonomically if you know the rest of the stuff was kind of knocked down on the insides, but. Anyways, there you have it, the Kubi KU-200. This is a knife I can recommend, and yeah, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.